Hi, I'm Bob Masago. Welcome to this in-studio session. I'm pleased to welcome Sam Bush. He's got a new album out called Radio John. The songs of John Hartford, tribute to John Hartford, is available now on Smithsonian Folkways Records. If you're not familiar with the name Sam Bush, let me just remind you that he is a four-time IBMA Mandolin Player of the Year. Lifetime Achievement Award winner from the Americana Music Association, three-time Grammy winner. But more importantly, he has two t royalty titles. He's the King of Telluride and, according to the state of Kentucky, the King of Newgrass. Do those, do those titles take any special responsibilities? I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't have to lord over my kingdom. Uh, it's, uh, uh, no, it doesn't take much responsibility because I didn't name myself those. But, yeah, it was actually pretty great for a Kentuckian to be. I w it was an honor on the, on the Kentucky Senate floor. And uh, miraculously, it was a unanimous vote. <laughs> I guess uh, Madeline Pickens not so political, huh? <laughs> but at any rate, it was it was a big honor and big deal in one of the other commonwealths, uh, you know, to to be honored that way for sure. Well, it's great to have you here and to hear this new album. It's such a, a wonderful tribute to John Hartford, a, a man whose songwriting I think is underestimated. I well, it, it could well be in that uh, you know a lot of people might not have known about John's early career in the '60s. I was fortunate. I was born in 1952, so I was fortunate to uh, grow up in around the Nashville, Tennessee uh, television viewing area, and uh, I got to see him on a on a show. And people used to have syndicated shows on Saturday afternoon, like the Wilburn Brothers, Porter Wagner, Ernest Tubb, Bill Anderson, my favorite, Flatt and Scruggs. And uh, so I'm pretty sure it was the Wilburn Brothers show one day. I saw this guy singing a song, but he was playing Scruggs-style banjo. And, you know, I'd never seen anyone sing at the same time as being able to play Scruggs-style banjo. And uh, But I didn't get his name. And my dad and I went down to... We used to, a good opportunity to go to Grand Ole Opry. So we were down in Nashville a few weeks later at the Ernest Tubb record shop, and I'm just leafing through albums, and uh, there's that guy. That's him. That's the guy I saw, and it was John Hartford's his name. Okay, so I bought that album, and it was one that had, the album was called Earth, Words, and Music, and specifically on that record, you mentioned his songwriting. I think that particular record has such deep songs. Um, by John, a couple of those I recorded uh, off that record. And Gentle On My Mind was also on that record. So I heard that Gentle On My Mind song before Glenn Campbell had recorded it. And then, of course, it really busted wide open for John when Glenn had a hit on that song. And, uh, but I, uh, I, I so I, then the, each time we'd go back to Nashville, I would go back to the Ernest Tubb record shop and get me another John Hartford record. So his early ones on RCA, which were done in Nashville and uh, with kind of, you know, Nashville instrumentation backing John, but, you know, your standard country instrumentation of the day. And uh, I just loved his songs, and, and it was always unique to me how he blended the banjo and sometimes maybe played the fiddle. Very fine guitarist, he, he did that too. So uh, I just grew up loving John's uh, music. And then when he later um, started the band that we, we call it the Aerial Plane Band, there was never an official name for it. I think they actually called it the Dobrolic Plectral Society. But it was uh, Vassar Clements on fiddle, Tut Taylor Dobro, and, and Norman Blake, uh, guitar and mandolin and John on banjo and guitar. And so when he started that group, it was like all us young bluegrassers really went nuts because uh, there was, you know, some of our favorite bluegrass pickers in, in Vassar and, and Norman, but John's great songs and, and the direction of where that could go. Uh, so I've often said, and I got to write it in a, in a liner note for a, a later a version of Aerial Plane on CD that I truly believe there there wouldn't be any what we call new grass music without John Hartford and his Aerial Plane band. They really inspired a lot of pickers uh, to uh, stretch out on these instruments. Would you like to play one of the songs for the from the new album? Well, first? yeah, but but by myself, of course. I... Yeah, because uh, I, I had a little some some health snafus in 2019 and. And, I, and, the, and my first gig back was playing at Telluride that year in Colorado. So we opened up with this song, and boy, it sure was apropos then. And and after our all of us in America, well, the world, of the 2020 lockdown, uh, this seemed like an appropriate song to put on this record, too, called I'm Still Here. <laughs>
Marines are running towards each other. Shotguns are pointed at my head. Tornado clouds are forming over the crossroads. H-bombs are folding around my bed. But I'm still here. I'm still here. Now how about that? My city may be falling, but I'm still here. The assassination squad has got their orders. The repossession man is on his way. The landlady's giving me her notice. I'll get pitched up with the trash just any day, but I'm still here. I may have lost my lunchbox, but I'm still here. Cigarettes are gone and so is my money <laughs> So are all my nerves and all my teeth My hair is falling out, I'm getting skinny Yeah, my friends are either dead or on relief But I'm still here I'm still here and still breathing Well, I might be good as baby but I'm still here, well, I'm still here. I'm still here, and how about that? My city may be falling, but I'm still here. Sam Bush in studio at WNRN. I'm still here. They can find that one on his new album, Radio John. The songs of John Hartford, and that is available now on Smithsonian Folkways Records. Sam, you mentioned how you came about John's music, but when did you have your first opportunity to play with him? Uh, that would have been in uh, Bean Blossom, Indiana, 1971, in the band Bluegrass Alliance. And uh, Bill Monroe, uh, although, you know, a lot of people think, oh, he didn't like progressive and everything. He actually booked us because we were progressive and we were different than, you know, the other things. So Bill was behind us uh, and uh, also booked on that um, festival was John Hartford and the Aereo playing band. So now that he had kind of an acoustic uh, bluegrass instrumentation, you know, John wanted to play the bluegrass festival, things that he hadn't really been a part of. He'd been in California writing for the Smothers Brothers show while, the, you know, we were back east in festivals. So uh, at the, we got to uh, meet them. Um, I'd, I'd know, I'd met Vassar Clements before as a boy. And uh, so I was like 19 now and our band Bluegrass Alliance and that included Tony Rice on guitar back then and uh, Courtney Johnson on banjo. And so we uh, made, made the, you know, got to meet Hartford and them, and I was really thrilled about it. And uh, one thing we found out quickly was that his love of jamming, I never met anyone that loved jamming and picking more than Hartford. I mean, he could, he could, he'd rather pick than eat. And um, so we probably, uh, that night after Aerial Plane Band played and just blew the lid off the place for me, uh, they, we, we probably had about, a, I don't know, three hour jam session around a campfire. And, and so then when John and his guys would come to Louisville, where we live, Louisville, Kentucky, um, um, you know, we, they'd come over to our bass player Ebo's house and we'd jam then. So I was like, man, these guys, they love to jam. And so it was actually, I actually, um, Tut was the first one to leave the band. 
of John's band, and so they actually asked me to replace Tut. And um, of course, I loved that group and everything, but we had just gotten New Grass Revival going, and it just really wasn't the right time. And of course, I got to go on and record numerous things with John, and we played on we played together a lot on the road because we had the same manager and booking agent. So uh, we would literally open the show for John, we the New Grass Revival. And then John would do his set, and then we'd prob prob band together and do another half hour after John's set. Or some nights he'd just go, you know what, guys, I don't want to play by myself, because now he was a solo performer. And, um, and some nights he'd just go, I don't want to play by myself. Well, well y'all just want to play the whole set with me? Of course, we loved it, and we did. And So a lot of these songs, uh, some of these tunes, definitely on this recording, uh, we, used to, we used to play with John, and um, quite a lot of them, actually. So I've... And, and some of them I later, you know, I played on his recordings of these and uh, where, and he actually re-recorded some of his early stuff that what had been on RCA for the Flying Fish label. Now we had these sessions and I, there was two specific albums I got to play on, All in the Name of Love and Nobody Knows What You Do. And, uh, and John was, you know, he was in a very good period then of picking and, and uh, I was really, it, it was a great chair to get to sit in, to watch it all go down. Nobody knows what you do with an especially good album. I think. Yeah, I really loved it. And, and what, really one of the big thrills was meeting Buddy Emmons and playing with Buddy Emmons. Uh, and, and, and John would sit me, they'd sit me right beside Buddy in the studio. <laughs> and Buddy would look at me and go, hey, I like you, okay. I just hate mandolins. <laughs> So if somebody brings a mandolin in, there's going to be a fast bluegrass kind of song played, and I don't like those at all. <laughs> but, yeah, Buddy was actually always very nice to me. <laughs> Would you be willing to play us another song from the album? Yeah. And this one, uh, again, uh, probably one of, one of, he had done this earlier, but I, I got to play on the re-recording of it and sing harmony with John on this one. And this is features uh, Tall Buildings. Someday, my baby, when I am a man And others have taught me the best that they can They'll sell me a suit and cut off my hair And send me to work in tall buildings So it's goodbye to the sunshine, good to the dew and goodbye to the flowers and goodbye to you I'm off to the subway I must not be late I'm going to work in tall buildings Now when I'm retired, my life is my own I made all my payments, it's time to go home And wonder what happened betwixt and between When I went to work in tall buildings So it's goodbye to the sunshine, goodbye to the dew, and goodbye to the flowers, and goodbye to you. I'm off to the subway, I must not be late, I'm going to work in tall
Sam Bush in studio at WNRN. A song from Radio John, The Songs of John Hartford, his new release. It's available now on Smithsonian Folkways Records. Sam, it's kind of different than a lot of tribute albums. Tribute albums a lot of times are to people that influence other artists. This one's very personal for you. Well, it is. And, uh, and when I first got it going, I I didn't aim for this to be a record. I was, uh, Lynn and I, my wife and I like to, we work together. She runs our, she's the accountant money manager, so runs our road band business. And a lot of, we, we just, we do so much business in our house that sometimes we need to get away together and, and get out of our house just to not do as much business. So we go down to Florida and I take little machines, recording machines and take instruments and like to sit around and make, maybe make up a tune. But sometimes in, in, you know, you get stuck making up a tune. So I just revert back to what are some songs I really like? And I was just kind of think about these old Hartford songs. And I took a lyric book that John put out one time with me once and so I started singing some of these. And and then I got stuck. I'm, I'm not very, I'm not a good engineer and I could not figure out how to work my machine. So my friend Donnie Sundle, who's a great musician down there that co-owns the studio, he um, said, well, I'll come over tomorrow. I, I could probably help you out. Well, the next day he showed up with, he brought an entire recording board, Pro Tools, <laughs> digital rig, speakers, microphones, preamps, even an extra bass. And so at this point, I thought, huh. So I started, first thing we just started doing, horsing around, start playing some of these Hartford songs. And I went, okay. And, and I really aimed to just sort of make tapes. Well, I still call them tapes. But make tapes uh, to, to, to play for my band. And then we they learn them. Well, then when Donnie brought, you know, when he brought over the digital equipment, it's like, well, you know, now it's being professionally recorded. So... I still didn't have a specific plan, though. And then when the 2020 lockdown occurred, um, the fellow that's engineering here with us on this uh, tour I'm doing with Edgar Meyer is uh, Rick Wheeler. So Rick has a home recording studio, too. So uh, we, in 2020, spent a lot of time, a lot of hours with Rick Wheeler, now continuing to work on these tapes and really working hard on the singing and and the thing I had to work the hardest on was probably banjo picking. So I didn't end up, I didn't set out to just make a record where I played everything myself. So nine of the ten tunes are the John Hartford songs that I did play all the instruments. And and then uh, one tune called Radio John that John Pinnell and I, John's from Illinois, and he grew up loving the music of Hartford also. So Pinnell and I, and we are co-writers and, and uh, St. Louis Cardinal fans together more than anything. But we, we talk more baseball than songs. But um, uh, Pinnell and I got, and again, this was in 2020. So over the phone, we kind of started writing this. I had this song about Radio John that uh, that even this even the term Radio John's a little personal to me and that uh, on the back of the New Grass Revival's first album cover is a poem written about the band by a guy named Radio John from Topanga Canyon. Well, it was Hartford. I think he was some somehow contractually restricted from using his own name, you know, when you're on a certain label or whatever. Uh, and so he wrote Radio John, and that was his uh, that was his DJ name when he was a young man, too, on KSTL. So John Pinnell and I wrote all this. I mean, at one point we had like 20 verses about, well, we we got to cut this down, because we were trying to talk about all the things Hartford was really good at, and there were many, you know, fiddler, banjo picker, singer, songwriter. Uh, later, I remember when he said, I'm going to start dancing. I'm learning to dance while I play. I'm going impossible on banjo well he did it or he became a steamboat captain i mean he worked on boats as a boy you know and he loved the the river and the steamboats and once i asked him well what what all does that entail if if you become a steamboat captain he says well you have to be able to map the mississippi river and i went really <laughs> so or one day he just decided you know what i'm going to change my handwriting and he learned to do this beautiful like calligraphy he called it southern handwriting and I said, how'd you learn to do that? He goes, oh, it's just like picking. You get in a rhythm. You just do it. It's rhythm. And I went, this guy must even breathe in time, right? So John had wonderful rhythm. And uh, so um, it, these songs mean a lot to me. And and uh, But it, once I, once Donnie and, and Rick, we, we, we once we honed in on making these things, then it became a reality. We could put them out like this and I'm glad I've done it once because the joy for me is playing with others uh, so meticulously overdubbing with stuff that I've already done doesn't knock me out but you know I'm glad I we went through the process once because 
and maybe I'll do it on a song or two sometime in the future, but I don't, you know, whole record, no. I like picking with a band. Do you have time to give us one more? Oh, yeah. And this this one was on uh, one that uh, this song that I got to record for the record. It was originally done on on uh, in John's RCA early RCA period from the '60s, and it was on that first album I ever bought by John called Earth Words of Music. So this one, and and we, when you spoke that John was maybe an underestimated songwriter, I, I have to agree with that because I, and for me he was writing beautiful things on on par with Chris Christopherson and, and Mickey Newberry and the great writers of, of the 60s and so this is a simple thing is love when you come across and to me with your hair tangled grass of evening Because somebody said one time it wasn't natural. What a joy for us just running down this crooked trail at midnight and the peaceful things inside me that it does. You whisper low, I have to go. The acid tears start coming slow to complicate a simple thing is love. Awake now, I don't hear the floorboards creaking as you walk back from the window. Or feel your satin fingers drawing patterns on my back where I lay dying. Without you, I'm a child who sucks the vacant thumb of emptiness left crying when he has not had enough. At the mercy of an empty room, sing verses to some faded wall, confused about a simple thing as love. It's too bad we couldn't stay here till the clock runs out and falls from sheer exhaustion. Or till morning as I watch you as you stoop to pick your things up from the floor. But too soon for us it's over and the shock of the electric light bulb sunrise in the ceiling up above. As it dangles to remind us spider web that binds us and just complicates a simple thing as love awake now i don't hear the floorboards creaking as you walk back from the window or feel your satin fingers drawing patterns on my back where i lay dying Without you, I'm a child who sucks the vacant thumb of emptiness left crying when he has not had enough. At the mercy of an empty room, sing verses to some faded wall, confused about a simple thing as love. Sam Bush in studio at WNRN, another song from the new Radio John. The Songs of John Hartford, that's available now on Smithsonian Folkways Records. Sam, I can tell you how much we appreciate you coming in today. Well, thank you. And also, I'd just like to add, uh, it's just uh, it's coming out quicker than I thought. It'll be available on vinyl at the end of uh, March, I think. Oh, so that that's, we were, you know, vinyl's kind of following along whenever the pressing pl plants all catch up. But uh, so it's, it's on vinyl. I just got one right before I left the house here. Yesterday we were in Nashville at the time of this interview, and uh, they just kind of came in and, oh, boy, I like album covers. <laughs> and, and this fine artwork done by Willie Matthews on 
on to cover this who Willie did John's uh, Mark Twang album many years ago. So Willie is an old friend from Colorado and then all of us tied in a lot of tie-ins with people that I got to work with or you know Willie the artist. The whole thing is because we all loved Hartford's music. I also want to mention to everybody that although it's not in the Commonwealth close by, you can see Sam Bush this summer. He's playing at Merle Fest. That'll be in April. And in October, so I guess the fall, Bluegrass Island Festival in Manio on the Outer Banks. Sam, thanks again. I'm Bob Masago for WNRN. Big thanks to Graham Rosner for his engineering on today's sessions. Thanks for listening.